How often should you clean the windows? There's no right or wrong answer. But what I would say is, is do not make the same mistake that most people do when they first start out. Which is to ultimately try and put the customer first. You should really think along the lines of that the business, you should try, you should try and remember that the business is there ultimately for your benefit. It's not there for the customer. Yes, we serve customers. Yes, we are in the service-based industry. Of course, the customer will pay for that service. Well, that service should be delivered in such a way that ultimately you are the one that decides how that works. So, for example, when I very first started again, my poverty-driven mindset was get as much work as you can, get as many customers as you can, say yes to every single opportunity. And the only problem with that is, is that you soon realize that actually you're not setting boundaries. And in the absence of you not setting boundaries, the customer takes it upon themselves to set those boundaries. And before you know it, you'll run pillar to post and uh, it's you that's burning the candle at both ends. And the customer is ultimately the person that's benefiting the most. I've said all along that you need to you need to be of the mindset that I will happily deliver the service, but it has to be on my terms, okay? Uh, and that's a mistake I made at the beginning. I, I didn't do that. I was, I was literally just gathering names left, right in Chelsea and saying yes to work that really was massively underpriced, but the desperation is what drove me. I'm sure I'm not alone. I'm sure any person with even an ounce of honesty and integrity would, would say the same. If you um, if you run a business, you will make mistakes, and that's it. And one of the biggest mistakes I made was doing that. So, when you're taking on jobs like you're taking on fortnightlies, uh, fortnightly window cleaning, you're taking on weekly window cleaning, you're taking on ad hoc window cleaning as and when the customer wants it, you're taking on four weekly, you're taking on eight weekly, you're taking on six weekly, you're taking on three monthly, and before you know it you are run ragged you are burnt out you've let umpteen people down because you couldn't you can't keep everybody happy at the best of times let alone when you're running yourself ragged so you have to set yourself a routine and you have to set yourself a structure and it could be something as simple as saying we're going to take on a four weekly window cleaning fortnightly window cleaning as a secondary and maybe the odd weekly job, okay? Um, we try not to do ad hoc window cleaning. We try not to. But if we get a point on the road to where we, let's say for argument's sake, we've had it um, last year where we had a number of people come off the road to trying to save money, etc. Then if an opportunity came my way, so we've got Wheaton Barracks, for example, up near us, now, we will do ad hoc window cleaning for, for those houses on the premise that they are what are called march out parades. So obviously when you're, in the, when you're in the military, anybody that's ever been in the military will tell you if you are on a camp, you uh, get moved or redeployed elsewhere, you have to pack up your parrots and monkeys, all your belongings, and then you have to sort of move house, okay? And when you move out of a house on a camp, that's called a march out. So ad hoc window cleaning for us up until recently has been really march outs only. Um, and, you know, we charge a premium for that. Largely because those that want a march out window clean, a lot of them do not have a regular window cleaner. Some of those people have been in those houses for five or six years and not a single solitary, you know, drop of water that has not come from a rain cloud uh, has, touched, has, uh, has touched those windows or frames. You know, soapy water has not graced those frames, therefore they are absolutely honking. And uh, it will take a bit of time to make those kind of jobs uh, come up. So we charge um, we charge triple time, uh, triple the, the normal fee. So if we're charging 15 quid, let's say, for an average three bed semi, that's a maintenance clean every four weeks, then what we're doing 
um what then what we would do then is basically say right well it's 45 quid to do ad hoc window cleaning and that takes into account the fact that obviously you may have to dedicate a guy to go and do a handful of march outs again when when units move they tend to move as one so all the families from that regiment will move um give or take within a window of about three or four months so you will probably end up with a glut of march out um march out window cleans therefore it makes sense actually if you've got 10 march outs well you can dedicate one guy to go and do them all um and he will probably uh he'll probably be on site for about eight eight hours what have you um pay him his you know pay pay the the wages etc of him to do that and then you make a profit on the back end so that you know is 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 one thing to consider i we we decided as well to to stop doing i say we it was i at the time it was it was me um i had a guy who was a contractor uh working with us like called steve and me and steve sort of looked at each other going these eight weeklies are just kicking the crap out of us they are taking longer to clean and we made the mistake of again because you were trying to gather customers you're trying to, to not put as many barriers in the way we weren't charging a premium we were just doing a job that would take us twice as long to complete uh, than a four weekly and we were just charging you know normal time so ultimately it was devaluing what we were what we were trying to achieve we weren't actually earning much in the way of money for it so we decided to bin those off same with six weeklies we dropped the six weeklies again because sometimes every four weeks you're in a certain area but then you know um two weeks later you could be back in that same area and you know before you know it that six weekly appointments are just drifting all over the diary etc so it's pointless having so we settled on four weekly four weekly is our default offer because most people get paid at the end of the month most people want the windows maintain the to, to maintain the cleanliness of the windows as you go it's a smaller expense because once you've got that first clean done um you know which we charge extra for so we charge extra for the first clean get it up to par get it as good as we can make it and then from there it's just a maintenance clean every month you know which doesn't take as long as the first clean you know four weekly means generally speaking there should be 13 cleans a year however we've got to take into account things like holidays someone wants to go on holiday someone wants to have work done on the property someone wants to you know you know so for example someone might have a bereavement etc so then we're able to then sort of say right well even with those most people will have somewhere between 11 and 12 cleans a year okay and so you're still managing your cash flow you're still money's still coming in at regular intervals etc you know and your turnover of, of of customers um is is lower because you're maintaining the cleanliness as you go we also find as well if you're doing four weekly you can set a rotor that basically means every four weeks on a set day um so then what happens is is people start recognizing the fact that you're turning up in the same uh in the same area and they start seeing patterns and they won't necessarily know how often we come to the day they'll go oh he came here four weeks uh and, you know, four weeks of the day last time they won't notice that but what they will notice is if particularly if you've got a liveried van that liveried van is appearing on their street routinely um that you know that repeated message of estuary cleaning estuary cleaning estuary cleaning eventually someone might turn around and say actually mate how much to do mine x y and z it's that yeah it'll cost you this much we can start you off next time um on the four weekly um sort of thing or if i've got time then we'll squeeze it in but generally speaking we do not clean people's windows there and then we make them wait and that's almost a way of weeding them out a uh, weeding time wasters out and setting the tone which is ultimately as i've mentioned previously the business is there for our benefit not truly the, we dictate how how often we work not the customer okay um and that's how we work it we work a four weekly rotor now that's not to say that in the future we won't take on eight weeklies i'm giving serious consideration to doing eight weeklies because of the number of vans that we've got split between two businesses i'm thinking to be fair we might get another van uh, and dedicate eight weeklies to that uh, to that vehicle and then that way it's you know it pays for itself we charge it we charge a premium for eight weeklies 
So for example, if we're charging, let's say for argument's sake, you're charging 15 quid for three sides of a semi-detached house, then you would probably want to charge somewhere between 25 and 27 pound to do an eight weekly clean because of the amount of time you're gonna to have to spend cleaning those windows, the fact that the the you're you're not cleaning them as often, therefore you're gonna to have to spend more time cleaning the windows each time you arrive. Also take into account the fact that you know just because a customer is on <coughs> excuse me, just because a customer is on eight weekly window cleaning does not mean they're not gonna go on holiday. So you still have to allocate, you still have to understand that, you know you still will probably have skips. And if someone skips a window cleaning uh, appointment on a four weekly, right, well, eight weekly, it's, you know, to be fair, it's an extra five, 10 minutes, whatever you, if needed, um, because they're going on holiday. We don't charge extra for that. But then here's the thing. If you're doing eight weekly and then they skip a clean, that's going to be 16 weeks, more than three months, well over more than three months before the next clean. How much dirt grime salt bird shit fly shit you name it how, mu how much gubbins is there going to be on that window in 16 weeks answer a fair amount is that going to warrant more time spent cleaning the windows absolutely am i going to do it for free not in your fucking life so ultimately you have to you know charge extra charge a premium and you go from there so that's what we will probably do um in the next sort of year possibly look at getting another van involved um doing the eight weeklies and uh yeah i think the bottom line is is you have to under you have to try and put yourself in the position of a customer that values what you have to offer and sort of say well actually do i want my windows you know maintain the cleanliness of my windows generally speaking you know, do I, we, or is four weekly sufficient? Can I honor the arrangement? So there's no point advertising for eight weekly window cleaning if you can't honor it. Um, so I would look at, you know, set yourself up a nice road to four weekly, that's every 28 days, and allocate each, let's say, parcel up each of those um, days and set a day every four weeks. So every four weeks on a Monday, you do that. Every four weeks on a Tuesday, you do that. Every four weeks on a Wednesday, you do that. Every four weeks on, 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 on. And every single day is allocated for. Um, and if you did that, you know, because you're in a routine, the customer accepts you're in a routine, whether you choose to text the customer the night before or not, we do, but it's not, you know, not absolutely essential. If you're then, if you combine the fact that you turn up every four weeks on the same day, with the fact that you're texting the customer the night before, with the fact that you offer bank transfer, with the fact that you're not knocking on the door at tea time, then what happens is ultimately you're building value because they can say, well, actually, he's not going to knock on my door at tea time. I don't have to have cash in the house at all, all hours. You know, I can go out. I don't have to wait in for someone to sort of pop round so I can pay him, etc. Or I don't have to leave money out if, you know, if I don't want to, etc. I can just bank transfer it. Job done. Thanks very much. It's It's seamless. And, um, you know, when you're first starting out, you will be in what's called a growth mindset. You'll think, take on as many jobs, take on as many jobs. But then in doing that, you know, if you're able to sort of not put as many boundaries in the way, you'll gather customers pretty quick. Gathering customers is not a problem. It's keeping them happy, um, you know, is the challenge when you're trying to balance that with everything else when you're on your own. Um, but as you get busier and you get bit, you know, bigger and you take on, for example, an additional vehicle, an additional member of staff, that side of it is easier to manage because you've got bods to be able to do it. If you're that one man band on his own, you need really to sort of set as better frame, as best a framework for you as you can manage in your head. Um, and then sort of try and build on that. But yeah, bottom line, there is no right or wrong answer, you know. As someone has said in the past, you're not the windy cleaning guard. I'm not, I'm not. But, you know, like I say, if you if, no, there is no right or wrong answer. There is only what works and what doesn't work. And, and I think if you can just sort of get yourself into the mindset of saying, you know, I do have a choice of how I operate. I can change. If something's not working, I can change it. Um, then, you know, you will you will be the one that is left standing at the end and you will be successful. And that, when it's when all said and done, is why we do what we do. 
we do it to make money, to provide for our families, to, you know, make a life for ourselves. Now, the question is, do you want a hard life or do you want an easy life? That is in your hands and your hands alone. On that rather contrived bombshell, keep on keeping on. If you like the content that I put out, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Be a smart ass if you want to. It's fine. Keep on keeping on. See you in the next one.